Football is here. Hello and welcome to a Thursday live on the morning after on Sports Grid in Sirius XM Channel 159. That's the home for Sports Grid Radio on Sirius XM, all across the Sports Grid Network as well. I am Ben Stevens. Football is here. Football has been back, but football is fully here. On this Thursday, the debut of the 2022 NFL regular season in Los Angeles tonight, the reigning Super Bowl champs begin their title defense against the preseason Super Bowl favorites in the Buffalo Bills. Today's show, the theme is one word, simply football, all two hours long. We'll sprinkle in some other sports, but the focus is going to be football and we are seeing line movement on those numbers that you saw right there for the season opener tonight for the National Football League the Buffalo Bills remain a two and a half point favorite but that total trickling down just a little bit for most of this week it was 52 and a half for that over under now at 51 in a hook so the total coming down by a single point where will those lines be by the time we get to kick off tonight around 8 15 8 30 p.m eastern time out in los angeles where last season ended in 2021 inside sofi stadium the rams winning a super bowl on their own home turf tonight they open up their season hoping to defend that super bowl championship against those buffalo bills again that line two and a half in favor of the bills it opened at one in favor of the road team in buffalo it has worked its way up all of those markets backing buffalo right now the off-season markets though training camp discussion pre-season conversations they go to bed Today starts the 2022 NFL regular season. So we're not talking future odds necessarily. We're diving into the game props for tonight's NFL opener. A quarterback comparison with their favorite targets on either side. For the Buffalo Bills, Josh Allen has the higher passing yards prop, 274 and a hook. His favorite target, of course, Stephon Diggs, 69 and a half for his receiving yards prop last night. Stephon Diggs averaging about... 72 receiving yards per game throughout the 17 regular season contests last year for Buffalo. Josh Allen only went over that number of 274 and a half just six times in the regular season. But every time he did, he threw for at least three bills. Something to pay attention to tonight if you think he has a chance to open up this season in a big way as the preseason NFL MVP favorite. If you think you can find some plus money, maybe an alternate passing yards prop of 300 or more. Now, Matthew Stafford has been a topic of conversation for the Los Angeles Rams all offseason. Sources reporting yesterday to ESPN's Adam Schefter that Matthew Stafford did in fact undergo offseason elbow surgery as we got into training camp. Sean McVay, the head coach in LA, saying that what Matthew Stafford was dealing with, those elbow issues, more similar to what you would see out of a Major League Baseball pitcher, a little bit abnormal for a quarterback. He is expected to be a full go, but it will be interesting to see how the Rams proceed tonight on offense given that 270 and a half passing yards prop for Matthew Stafford, a number that he went over in the first 5 games for LA last year in the regular season, 8 of the first 9 in a Rams uniform as well. And of course, Cooper Cup, yeah, that receiving yards prop you see of 92 and a half, it's no longer 92 and a half. It's 94 and a hook live on this Thursday, the debut day of the National Football League. And we welcome in our Sports Grid Radio audience, the opening hour of TMA on a day that is all about football. Sirius XM Channel 159. All of our terrestrial radio affiliates now in the mix as well. I am Ben Stevens. The Buffalo Bills, the Los Angeles Rams open up the NFL season against one another tonight in the city of of angels inside sofi stadium so we're looking at those player props once again 94 and a half now is the receiving yards prop for cooper cup it is lofty for a season opener that is a large large number but it's a number that cooper cup went over in 15 of 17 games a season ago and oh yeah he had 92 yards in one of the games he went under so very very close to that number but maybe it's too big for you to start off this season maybe you look 
to the secondary market. A guy that came on incredibly strong for Buffalo, especially the last time that we saw him in that AFC divisional round against the Kansas City Chiefs was Gabe Davis. He had 201 receiving yards in that game inside Arrowhead in the middle of January. Four receiving touchdowns, but the number of 60 and a half for his receiving yards prop tonight is only one that he went over just twice in the regular season. Same for Allen Robinson last year as a member of the Chicago Bears. Just over now 65 and a half receiving yards. That live prop up from 62 and a half just twice last year as a member of the Bears. But now he's playing with Matthew Stafford, a little bit different than the quarterback carousel he had to deal with in the Windy City the last couple of seasons in the NFL. And this is all in the perspective of two teams that are certainly front runners to get to the Super Bowl and maybe claim a Lombardi trophy. The Buffalo Bills looking for that Lombardi trophy. The Rams start their title defense tonight. Buffalo is the favorite in pretty much every market you can imagine, including game number one this evening. The favorites in the AFC at plus 350. The favorites to win a Super Bowl with an improving number at 6-1. to one. The Rams tied for the second best odds in the NFC championship market at plus 500, but LA is still the fourth best odds to win a second straight Super Bowl at 11-1. to one. We will continue to go around week one of the National Football League regular season. A special Thursday treat for you out there. Donnie Wrightside joins the show up next, live right here on The Morning App. Pharrell, coast to coast. Keep cashing tickets. Over four and a half for Merrill, minus 105. I was all over this game, and I got to tell you, it was very hard because the uh, Diamondbacks have won eight of ten. They played well. They beat him yesterday, five nothing. I'll give you Kelly on the over because I think the numbers at four and a half, I, whatever. I stayed away from the game, though, based on uh, that high lure of 140 that Vegas was selling. The Sports Grid Network. The morning after. It's a hint of skepticism on these numbers that so heavily favor Buffalo in pretty much every category. I know if they won the coin toss, you think they would have won, but they didn't. They could have just stopped the Chiefs from marching what felt like a thousand yards in four seconds, and they would have won the game. And who knows what would have happened against Cincinnati and then potentially Los Angeles. The Sports Grid Network. And then the Packers, who are very underrated, even got better year over year defensively. They, uh, outside of, you know, Minnesota, they're going to play some cake games too in that division. So keep that in mind. And then up in Zach Ertz, actually. Uh, the Dawson Knox quandary is interesting. I've heard a lot of experts say that he, he's a big bust. He's a big bust. And then I've heard a lot of experts say, oh my gosh, he's going to be awesome. But I, I like what my expert, Joe, says. Fantasy Sports Today. Only on Sports Grid. Are you looking for an edge for football betting this year? What if you could get insider knowledge from former team doctors about the injury mismatches every week? That's exactly what Sports Injury Central can give you. They're going to tell you what games to bet based on the hidden injury advantages. So their team of doctors will provide the data and their algorithm will tell you which games to bet. Against the spread, overs, unders, in-game bets, and prop bets. Sick Picks has it all. So take advantage of their 59% winning percentage over the last two seasons seasons and sign up today you might be the next daily fantasy millionaire no matter what you watch or where you play learn from the world's best dfs players lineup building tools expert projections and advanced stats change the way you play the game dominate the competition dailyroto.com the player's choice the early line. And world will stack up over the next couple weeks. Later in the season, we'll get some pretty big ranked rivalries going head to head. But it's very important to understand that ranked opponents versus ranked opponents early in the season don't matter all that much except for TV, television rankings, or excuse me, I say ratings, where, hey, you're going to want to tune into the top five matchup. Let them settle down in college football over the next couple weeks, and you'll know who's who and what's what. Only on Sports Grid.
Again, the theme for today's show is very simple. It is one word. It is football. Welcome back to the morning after. Live right here on this Thursday, all across the grid and Sirius XM Channel 159. You might be thinking to yourself, Ben, it's Thursday. The NFL opens up the regular season, but Donnie Wrightside is on the show. Normally, he's playing Monday morning quarterback looking back on the weekend of the National Football League. Well, we were off Monday for Labor Day, so it's a special Thursday treat for you to really emphasize how excited we are for the start of this NFL regular season. As I know, my man DRS is as well. Donnie, thank you for taking the time on this Thursday morning to join us to talk some football and get ready for this NFL season. As the young kids say, Ben, it don't get no better than right now. Mike, it's finally here. And before you know it, Ben, the Super Bowl will take place. Let's slow down. Let's enjoy every single nuance of this NFL season. I'm ready. I'm, I mean, Donnie was fired up for week zero yeah. between Nebraska oh, and Northwestern and making huge. sure he was locked in huge. for UTEP in North Texas. So he knows that football has been back, but football is now fully here on this Thursday. And DRS, it's not just the game tonight in Los Angeles between the Rams and the Bills. On Sunday, we have 14 games, 14 football games on Sunday for your full Sunday slate, including one between the Baltimore Ravens and the New York Jets, where the quarterbacks have been a big focus leading in to this game week. Lamar Jackson telling reporters after practice yesterday for the Ravens that his deadline for that contract negotiation and the extension he seeks, and he has been representing himself in all of these contract discussions, his deadline with the Ravens is Friday. That way he can focus on the game fully on Sunday. So that's one wrinkle. DRS. The other is a potential Joe Flacco revenge game because we got official word yesterday from Jets head coach Robert Sala that it will not be Zach Wilson. He is not quite ready yet despite progressing in a positive way following meniscus surgery earlier this summer after the Jets first preseason game. It will be Joe Flacco making the week one start for gang green at home against the Baltimore Ravens. So Donnie, let's start with Lamar Jackson. Are you concerned at all that these contract extension talks continue on as the Ravens are just a few days out from the regular season opener? For game one, I don't think so, Ben. But for a regular season, I do worry about it. And I don't know why there's always this arbitrary we can't talk during the regular season because a normal human being would say every single day, boy, I wish I could get my contract done. Why don't we just pick up the phone and get this contract done? I don't know why they shut it down for 18 weeks during the regular yeah. season. But having said that, whether or not, Ben, Lamar Jackson gets this contract, that's a fueling point. Because if you look at it saying, I didn't get my contract on Friday, I'll show them by absolutely showing out on Sunday. Or gets that big money and goes, you know what? I got a lot to prove. Let me go out and have a monster game on Sunday. So from a, a point of not looking at X's and O's in this game, I think it's a great thing for Baltimore Lamar Jackson either way if he gets his money or not. DRS, I saw that on the early line, you guys were going around giving out some of your NFL final preseason predictions and season-long props and award yeah. races and, of course, who's going to play and win a Super Bowl. My favorite season-long prop, in fact, the only one that I have personally bet, Lamar Jackson, over 900 and a half rushing yards this season. I expect a big, big season from yeah. Lamar Jackson, only playing in 12 games last year if he remains healthy. I think this Baltimore Ravens team is going to be a postseason team once again and a true contender within the AFC. And after all of that quarterback news yesterday, DRS, and Joe Flacco officially getting the start for the Jets, the line worked against New York, the home team on Sunday. It was six and a half in favor of the flock. It is now seven and a half past that key number of a touchdown in favor of Baltimore. Donnie, do you believe this is a true revenge game for Joe Flacco going up against his former team? Is there any motivation that you are adding to your handicap? No, and there's probably a lot of fans out there that didn't even know Joe Flacco even played for the Baltimore Ravens. It seems <laughs> like it was been so long ago. So I doubt that, you know, win one for the Gipper in the locker room here for the Jets isn't taking place. They're all professionals. But by the way, I do have to say, the six and a half to seven and a half, I actually don't agree with because Joe Flacco is the starter mm. here. So the betting market was telling us we'd rather have Zach Wilson on one leg than Joe Flacco. I disagree with that movement to go over seven and a half now. And Joe Flacco, of course, a Super Bowl MVP during his time 
with the Baltimore Ravens in their victory for a Lombardi Trophy over the Niners about a decade ago now. So, DRS, as we continue to go around the National Football League for week number one, let's go over to what I think might be one of the more competitive games that we will see late on Sunday afternoon in Minnesota between the Packers and the Vikings. A ton of focus on Kirk Cousins and all the offensive pieces that he has now. And it's the other side of things for Aaron Rodgers, who is going to be that lead wide out for number 12 in green now that Devontae Adams plays for the Las Vegas Raiders. This line, only one and a half in favor of Green Bay on the road. Donnie, what's your approach to what might be a really good ball game between the Pack and the Vice? I know it sounds kind of stupid, but I do think if the Minnesota Vikings lose this football game, it feels like there's no way they can actually win the NFC North. And it does sound stupid, Mm. and it probably is not the greatest analysis, but just that coming off of that week one. Because if I take a look at this game and say if Green Bay loses, I still think there's a chance that they could win this division. But for me, Minnesota, this game is at home. You see that spread down there, one and a half. We don't know how these young wide receivers are going to perform. And as I said, this is a perfect scenario for Minnesota. Maybe if you're playing Green Bay, Ben, week nine in that first show, down hey these young wide receivers got eight games under their belt they're ready to go they're showing up in minnesota in a dome where that is going to be so loud you can't hear yourself so that security blanket last year that aaron Rodgers had with Devonte adams hey just let me look out to the left and give him a wink he knows that's a 15 yard out you don't have that this year it'll be interesting to watch but i think minnesota wins opening day against the green bay packers This line, DRS, opened up in Green Bay's favor around two and a half points. And it might sound like conjecture to say this is more important than just week one of the NFL regular season. The Vikings have a lot of optimism. Their win total is up to nine and a half right now on the FanDuel Sportsbook. Their odds to make the postseason in minus money. And there are many out there, Donnie, that believe Minnesota can challenge Green Bay in the NFC North. The second best odds to do so at the moment. The Packers have won this division three straight seasons in eight of the last 11 years. So, Donnie, this is an important season opener for both teams. Do you believe that Minnesota can use this week one victory to truly challenge Green Bay for the division? Yes, I do. It's almost like the winner of this game. And again, it doesn't sound like the shrewdest way to go about things. But if Minnesota wins, I think it sends that signal like we're here to play football this year. You're at home. You can't lose this game at home because then, you know, they play again up in Green Bay and Lambeau. And that's probably not going to go as well as you figure it at home. You're completely healthy. Dalvin Cook's healthy. Kirk Cousins is healthy. Thielen and also Jefferson. You need this game for Minnesota. It's a much bigger game for Minnesota than Green Bay. But I do think Minnesota winning this game, a legitimate chance to take down that division. The line has worked in the Vikings' favor. 14 of their first 15 games last season decided by single digits. It is going to be competitive, as that line indicates, at one and a half right now in favor of Aaron Rodgers and the Packers on the road in the Twin Cities on Sunday afternoon. Speaking of the North, a divisional battle in the AFC North as well we know Mitchell Trubisky Donnie getting the start for Pittsburgh the Steelers on the road against the reigning AFC champs Joe Burrow and the Cincinnati Bengals right now Cincy near a touchdown favorite laying six and a half at home how do you preview this matchup DRS it, outside of just being sharp and saying, I'm just going to take the points with the Steelers. It's opening day. You know, Mike Tomlin will have his team prepared. You're still betting on Mitchell Trubisky on the road against a really talented Cincinnati team. Now, Cincinnati's offensive line is decent. Obviously, the only question marks in this game is, can Mitchell Trubisky perform? And also on the opposite side, is Joe Burrow completely healthy? If Burrow is yeah. healthy like we think he is, they should be able to win this game going away. But I got that sneaky suspicion just last year. I thought Buffalo was going to waste the Steelers' opening day on the road, and they didn't. The Steelers actually won outright there. So maybe a little Mike Tomlin magic week one. Mike Tomlin, his 16th year as the head coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers wow. in the first 15. The Steelers have won at least eight game or eight games each of those 15 seasons. We'll continue to go around the National Football League with DRS up next here, looking at some totals and over-under perspective to your week one NFL slate. Stay with us live right here on the morning after on Sports. the next daily fantasy millionaire no matter what you watch or where you play 
Learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. The Bostonian versus the book. My name is Matt Peralt. I'm the Bostonian. Introducing our one and only. He is the book. One Mr. Dave Sherapan. Now we've got the beat behind it, unfortunately. The Bostonian versus the book. Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers and The morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley Cups over there. Give me the game penalty. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider like the, everybody is out for the Warriors. In game yeah, live all like access. Mandy. I like Mandy against Bam. I think Mandy can win the game, take a corner. In half. game oh, live man. prime oh, time. The, major, the PGA champion. In yes. game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge only on Sports Grid. But I think truly this is where we're going to find out whether Tua is the guy in Miami. And obviously there's a guy named Lamar Jackson that's sort of now waiting in the wings to be a free agent in a couple of weeks. As bizarre as it was, it was Superman realizing that he's Clark Kent and he walks the earth with, earth with other humans. So um, I don't make too much of it. I think Anthony Joshua now has to embark on a new path for his career. Newswire, only on Sports Grid. Some Thursday total talk as we get you set for the NFL week one slate. Yes, tonight there is a game with a total of 51 and a half in Los Angeles between the Rams and the Bills. But we have 14 games on Sunday. One additional game on Monday to round out week number one. And Dottie Wright's side is still here. A man that loves his totals. We look at some over-unders across the league to start off. And Donnie, we were talking about the Vikings and the Packers and how that game might be more significant than just the first game of the season for a divisional race and what it might tell us about both Green Bay and Minnesota for this upcoming season. I think you could make a similar argument for week number one in Los Angeles, not necessarily tonight, but on Sunday afternoon between the Chargers and the Raiders. Right now, LA booked as a three and a half point favorite, but that total is up there, DRS, at 52 and a half. It is now the second largest total of the entire week one slate. What do you think this game will tell us about both of these teams and if they are true contenders within the AFC? Yeah, maybe the darlings of the AFC, primarily in the offseason, is the Chargers looking to take that next step. What's not to like? They revamped their defense. They got a lot of talent over there. Also, the offensive side of the ball. Herbert's going to be one of those emerging quarterbacks. Great wide receivers, and certainly Austin Eckler out of the backfield. But if we're looking at this game in totality, 51 and a half, they open up at Ben. Now we're seeing those 52 and a half, and I agree with that. It's because the Raiders are the question mark here. We think the Raiders, regardless of defenses they go up against, Carr and that offense now with Devontae Adams, they should be putting up points. You got 
have an elite slot receiver here in Hunter Renfro and also, you know, Waller at tight end. But if we flip that around to the Chargers, they should be able to go up yep. and down the field on that defense here for the Raiders. So this game is in a dome. We're not worried about any windy weather conditions, any precipitation in the air. I'm looking for both yeah. of these teams to get into the 20s or at least the Chargers to get into the high 20s. And that should be able to push you over that 52 and a half number. Yeah, we might see a ton of scoring in this game. We know the yeah. Chargers struggled defensively in terms of yardage last year, especially on the ground. And the Raiders needed to make up some ground as well in terms of their scoring defensive unit, bottom half of the league a season ago. And Donnie, you mentioned that the Chargers are the offseason darling within the AFC West and the AFC overall. And that's been the case even in the last couple of days. A small bit of movement here to win the division in the AFC West. The Chiefs were the favorites about a week ago at plus 155. 10 cents off that number. But LA moves up from plus 240 to plus 220. Do you trust in that move? Do you trust in this market, DRS? Do you trust in Brandon Staley as the head man leading the Chargers to truly contend for an AFC West divisional crown? Now, look, I like the team, and there's a lot of talent here, but there is also a part of me that says uh, you're not the coolest kid in the classroom when you go for it on every fourth down, regardless of if it makes some sense or do you convert it. He also had a disastrous final game of the season against those yep. Las Vegas Raiders. But if I'm looking overall, you know, coming around to teams where maybe you didn't think of a lot earlier in the offseason, I really like the Chargers at that plus 220 price. We always talk about the AFC West as really any one of these four teams can win it. But I got to tell you right now, if you said, Donnie, you need to play, say, battle one football team to win this division the Chargers plus 220 would get my money it's an area to look however the yeah. Chiefs have won the AFC West six consecutive seasons and Donnie we know that the AFC West whether it's the Chiefs who have dominated and hosted four straight AFC championship games or those Chargers finally cashing in on that optimism or your co-host Kevin Walsh on the early line, his prediction to get to the Super Bowl out of the AFC, the Denver Broncos, or even the Raiders DRS, the fourth team in this division who made the playoffs a season ago and won 10 games. This is going to be the AFC West, the most competitive division in all of football. Three teams, Donnie, at minus 140 or more to make the postseason. And the Raiders, again, a playoff team last year at plus 170. So how many teams, DRS, from the AFC West Make it to the playoffs. Yeah, I think we're going to get three teams in the playoffs. I really do think about that. And the joke I've had, you know, talking about through May, June, and July is the Raiders. Boy, what a shame the Raiders actually play in this division because they might be challenging for division championships and making a deep run into the playoffs because you got to get in to make a deep run. You got to get into the playoffs. That's how talented these are. But I would be shocked if we have the Chiefs, the Chargers, and the Broncos, one of those teams missed the playoffs outside of devastating injury. All three of those teams are playoff caliber, Ben. I mean, listen, Denver has the worst odds of the teams in minus money, but the Broncos still have the fifth best odds in the AFC to make the postseason. Excuse me, the fourth best odds in the AFC to make the postseason. That's how strongly favored they are to get there. That's for Denver yeah. at this moment. So that should show you that there is a lot of expectation for this AFC West as we get ready for the 2022 NFL regular season. Donnie, we talked the Joe Flacco revenge game. Is it truly a revenge game for the starting quarterback now for the Jets against the Ravens? We do have a true revenge game on Sunday. That would be between Cleveland and Carolina. Baker Mayfield gets the start for the Carolina Panthers against the Browns, the team that drafted him number one overall in 2018 and spurned him in a big way to the tune of $230 million fully guaranteed over a five-year deal to Deshaun Watson to allow Baker Mayfield to now be the starter in Carolina. But we're focusing on totals here. 41 in a hook is that over-under for the Panthers and the Browns. DRS, why do you think it is such a low total for this matchup on Sunday? Because it's not really about Baker Mayfield being on that low total here. It's really what you're going to get out of that Cleveland offense. What's the pathway to victory that you feel for Cleveland after game one? It's going to be like, oh, my goodness, Ben. Didn't we expect this 422 passing yards for Jacoby Brissett and four touchdowns? No, it's more of a game manager here. You have an elite backfield and a great offensive line. It's up to those Cleveland Browns you know, coaches to put in that game plan and say, hey, Jacoby, make the plays that you can make, but let's not go off schedule here. Let's keep it in a lower scoring battle. We'll win it in the trenches here, which I think is their way. 
like Baker Mayfield, I do think, can make some splash plays in this game. He's got some talent at wide receiver and certainly at running back with McCaffrey. He's going to be healthy to start this season. But if I'm looking at like a 41 and a half, 42 type price range here, Ben, I probably would be leaning under as well. I just don't see the big plays here because Jacoby Brissett, that's not his job here. His job is just to man the fort and make the right plays. DRS, I completely agree. You would think while Deshaun Watson is serving his 11-game suspension for Cleveland, the focal point of that Browns offense is going to be that two-headed monster in the backfield of Nick Chubb yeah. and Kareem Hunt. Amari Cooper is a newly acquired wide receiver for the Browns, but again, I think it is going to be that ground game that Kevin Stefanski calls up in a big way to ease Jacoby Brissett into this new system as a quarterback for the Cleveland Browns. And Christian McCaffrey is going to be incredibly vital, as we all know, for Carolina. But McCaffrey has only played 10 games combined in the last two seasons. Health is first and foremost for CMC. So that's 41 in a hook. The lowest total of the weekend DRS is in Chicago on Sunday. A matchup between Justin Fields and Trey Lance, the Bears and the Niners. It's 40 in a hook. One of the smaller totals is an intriguing game DRS in Nashville on Sunday. The Titans host the Giants laying five and a half, but the market has worked more in New York's favor here. This total is also 43 and a half. DRS, how do you evaluate this season opening matchup between the Giants and the Titans? Now, we say any given Sunday, right? And that even means more in the first two weeks of the season. After about weeks two or three, you'll know the generality of where you think this team is going to go up or down. But I don't know outside of just being a contrarian. Yeah, I'm circling the New York Giants on the road to keep this game close. Because, Ben, this isn't college football. We're not saying, like, hey, look, Oregon's getting 17 from Georgia. I think they can hang around. Not the case here. You're basically picking the winner of this game. And I don't think the Giants have any shot at going on the road, even though this isn't maybe one of the better Texans teams, excuse me, better Titans teams that we've seen over the past two to three years. I don't. But the fact of the matter is the Giants stink. And I don't think they're going to keep this within a touchdown here. So whoever's betting them down from the six and a half to the five and a half, good luck on that one. The Giants booked as an underdog in all but one of their 17 regular season games a season ago. New York was six and 10 against the spread. It's a new regime. It's Joe Shane in there as the general manager now and a new head coach the first year under Brian Dable. DRS, it is so fascinating to me to look at the futures market one final time on the Giants as we get ready for this regular season debut. New York has a win total of seven and a half. Seems a little bit lofty. The under has a ton of juice, but it's a number at seven and a half wins. The Giants have gone under in five straight years in eight of the last nine. So it's the first year, DRS, under Brian Dable, who was one of the co-favorites to an NFL coach of the year. What do you think success looks like for the Giants this season? Yeah, success probably would be getting to eight wins at this point. Now, used to get your 500 record. It doesn't anymore since we have a 17-game season. But Brian Dable, for myself, to be honest with you, Ben, over the past two years, even the year he was – I shouldn't say he was passed over. He had his pick of the litter, but actually stayed in Buffalo. He was my favorite assistant coach to get a head coaching job. So I do think in the future the Giants are going to be certainly in good hands here. But if we're worried about Daniel Jones, Daniel Jones isn't going to give you enough. He's going to fumble the football. He's not going to make the right play. So we'll have some splash runs. But I'm not looking for big things. If Brian Dable – and get eight wins out of this Giants team. Maybe he is the coach of the year. Daniel Jones, the quarterback now for New York. They did not pick up his fifth-year rookie option. It's not just DRS that questions if he's yeah. the future in the Big Apple. It's that new management under GM Joe Shane. All right, DRS, you gave us your Super Bowl prediction mm -hmm. earlier on the grid on the early yeah. line. It features a team from that NFC East, the now favored Philadelphia Eagles to win the division. What is that Super Bowl matchup? How do you think it plays out? Yep, yeah, let's see if it happens. Gets to the Buffalo Bills and the Philadelphia Eagles in that final Super Bowl matchup. And I do think, you know, my heart says the Eagles win that game. I hope they can even get there. But I do think the Buffalo Bills are the best team in the National Football League. They'll show that tonight and throughout the season, getting that number one seed on their way to their first Super Bowl championship. The largest win total in the entire National Football League this year for Buffalo. Bills. 11 and a half. The over has the juice at minus 135. Kevin Walsh probably takes the under DRS, but you know how that goes. We appreciate your time. Enjoy the season opener tonight for the NFL. It's time, Ben. Football is here. More football up next on the morning app.
Sports Grid, your 24-7 sports wagering network. They play less games. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less Rogers and the, the morning Russell after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell coast to coast. That's where they win cups. They win Stanley Cups over there. Give me the Game pass. time decisions. Kind of bizarre when you consider it. Like the, everybody is out for the Warriors. In game, live, all like access. Mandy. I like Vandy against Bam. I think Vandy can win the game, take it one. In game, oh, live, man. prime oh, yeah, time. The major, the PGA champion. In yeah. game, live, overtime. All done before the final bet. Get begins. the winning edge only on Sports Grid. They sent out a Jordan Montgomery, who evidently is the best pitcher in baseball. I know it's the Cubs. I don't care. But it looks like maybe word is getting out that, you know what? We don't really have an offensive coordinator. Why don't you guys get used to calling real plays with real players in the game and see if we can work something out over, let's just say, the first half. The early line, only on Sports Grid. The morning after. It's a hint of skepticism on these numbers that so heavily favor Buffalo in pretty much every category. I know if they won the coin toss, you think they would have won, but they didn't. They could have just stopped the Chiefs from marching what felt like a thousand yards in four seconds, and they would have won the game. And who knows what would have happened against Cincinnati and then potentially Los Angeles. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. Trubisky. He had the small advantage going to the, the final preseason game. He clearly won it with that, that performance. He was really good there. And, you know, I was telling you uh, a, a little while ago about how well he did in Buffalo for the Bills telling me behind the scenes as their number two quarterback last year. They were really surprised at how good he looked because, you know, it didn't, it didn't end well for him in Chicago. So Trubisky now is clearly the starter. And I give Mike Tomlin credit. The Sports Grid Network. Back right here on the morning after on Sports Grid and Sirius XM Channel 159. Thank you for joining us on this Thursday TMA, where the focus is one thing and one thing only. I mean, we'll touch on other sports, but the focus is mainly football because football is here tonight. The NFL regular season opener out in Los Angeles between the Rams and and the Bills. I am Ben Stevens. We are very pleased to welcome onto the show, it is Mark Drumheller from the Yahoo Sportsbook to help us take a look at tonight and the rest of this week one slate in the National Football League. Mark, thank you so much. A busy time of year as we have football fully back. College and the NFL, we are glad to have your expertise here on the morning after today. Definitely, Ben. Thanks for having me back. And it all starts tonight, right? We've waited all summer, and now we have Thursday night football kicking off and what's going to be, you know, an incredibly exciting year. We are talking a little bit earlier just about how much variance is in the NFC. And, you know, we get to see, you know, the team that ran through the gauntlet last year in the playoffs, the Rams tonight, take on one of the Super Bowl favorites in Buffalo. It is such a fascinating conversation because we start tonight where last year ended. The site of Super Bowl 56 the Rams' home stadium at SoFi Stadium in Los Angeles. But it's not the reigning Super Bowl champs in L.A., Mark, as the home favorites. It's the Buffalo Bills as the road favorites. And that line has only worked in favor of Buffalo. Now at two and a half, live on this Thursday morning, with an over-under that stands at 51 in a hook. Mark, I'll ask you a pretty simple question that might have a difficult answer. Do you agree with the line? Do you agree with the movement in favor of Buffalo, making them a a two-and-a-half-point road favorite against the L.A. Rams tonight? Yeah, I actually do as long as it stays under three, right? We saw it get up to three, and it got hit back a little bit this morning, so I'm not sure it's going to get back there. But, 
You know, one of the things, the Rams did have a tremendous run and won the Super Bowl, but, you know, I, I really like what the Bills did in the offseason, and I think that's why you're seeing them getting, you know, so much support in the betting market. Um, they realized, you know, in that shootout with the Chiefs where Josh Allen went touchdown for touchdown with Patrick Mahomes in, yep. in what was really an epic battle. And, you know, they realized there's one way to stop elite offenses in the NFL, and that's with pressure. So they went out and they addressed the trenches, especially the defensive line. They poached Von Miller from the Rams, who was a key component of their Super Bowl run. And they're going to look to get after the quarterback this year and let Josh Allen outscore the opponent. And, and I like the, the line of thinking. And, you know, I feel like it plays into, you know, how you need to beat the top teams um, in the NFL. And I think you're going to see that tonight. The Rams are a team in the trenches lost some, right? Whitworth retires, Corbett goes to Carolina. And I think that's going to be the difference in this game tonight. Um, you know, I like the Bills to win. Wouldn't touch it if it hits three. But, you know, my main play here is on the over. I think fans are going to get a really mm. exciting debut of the NFL season. It's a great point about Von Miller now with Buffalo, a key, key component of that Rams Super Bowl run a season ago. Von Miller leads the National Football League, the entire league in sacks in the last decade since 2011. That total slightly down to 51 in a hook, but still a lofty number for week number one, which draws our attention to the offenses. Josh Allen is the preseason NFL MVP. Favorite, his passing yards prop tonight, 274 in a hook. His main target, Stephon Diggs. On the other side, of course, it's Triple Crown Cahooper Cup and Matthew Stafford. Some questions about those that elbow for Stafford, Mark, as we get ready for this 2022 regular season. But two high-powered offenses. Who do you expect more from this evening? Yeah, I, I think the Bills are, are going to have more success offensively. But I really, when it comes to the receivers, I think we're going to see uh, Stefan Diggs um, really have a big game in comparison to where his yardage prop is lined. So I think that number is lined a little bit low. Cup in the 90s obviously makes a ton of sense. But he's going to get a lot of the attention from a Buffalo secondary that is really compromised without Tredavious White. And that, that's part of the reason why I'm on the over here is, you know, Buffalo's yeah. forced to start Elam, a rookie cornerback, and then they're going to, you know, roll out Dane Jackson, who is ranked 82nd by PFF in coverage last season. So um, there's going to be opportunity there for Matt Stafford, if he can elude that pass rush, to really put some yep. points on the board for the Rams. And I think Allen Robinson is a guy on that Rams offense that, uh, you know, people want to target. You can look at any time touchdown, uh, because I mm -hmm. think they're going to look for him to really break free um, in that, you know, Buffalo secondary. Allen Robinson's receiving yards prop now up by three yards from the overnight numbers. It was 62 and a half. Now it's 65 in a hook. Mark, I think it will be fascinating to watch Matthew Stafford tonight. We know about the elbow issues, but what does that play calling look like for the Rams? Because that 270 and a half number for Stafford is a number he went over in five straight games to start off last season for the Rams in 2021 and went over in eight of their first nine. But a lot of the focus will be not on the reigning Super Bowl champs, but the preseason Super Bowl favorites in the Buffalo Bills. Mark, you mentioned it at the top of this segment. The markets, all of them, plural, have worked in favor of Buffalo this summer. This specific line for the regular season opener, their odds to win a Super Bowl, their odds to win the AFC, and their odds to win their division in the AFC East. Buffalo now a minus 230 favorite, tied with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for the best odds of any team to win any division in the entire NFL. Are you as optimistic, Mark, as the rest of the market is on Buffalo's overall season outlook for 2022. I really am, Ben. And, and, you know, obviously when you look at divisional odds, do we want to bet into a minus 230 and tie up money for the entire season in the futures market? You know, probably not. Um, but I do think that they are, are head and shoulders above better than, you know, the other teams in the division. And I think that's really the difference here. When you look at the Dolphins and you look at the Patriots, both those teams have question marks, right? You know, the last time we saw the Patriots on the field, they couldn't get Josh Allen and Buffalo to even punt once in that playoff game. So, um, you know, there's a pretty big gap between those teams. Factor in the fact that Belichick lost J.C. Jackson to the Chargers, um, his top cornerback. So um, has some work to do. On both sides of the ball, I feel like in New England, you know, and losing Josh McDaniels as well. And then, of course, you look at Miami, a ton of turnover, a ton of change. 
Um, but, you know, I think it's going to take a little bit for those pieces to come together and to be successful. And the Bills, I think, definitely a 12-13 win team here should easily be able yeah. to win this division. And that's the reason, really, as you play out the path that Buffalo has the favored numbers to win the AFC and the Super Bowl because their odds to win a relatively weak division, that's strong, and their win total is 11 and a half. So if you add all that up, they might be the number one overall seed in the AFC, having home field advantage, et cetera. That is what Buffalo has in store, it seems, for 2022. But I'm glad you focused a little bit on the Finns and the Pats, because similar numbers in the AFC East, only 50 cents of difference between them. Both teams mark with an eight and a half for a win total, and both teams pretty similarly priced to make the postseason as well. And they open up 2022 against each other on Sunday in South Beach. The Dolphins now a three and a half point favorite against New England. Mark, how do you break down this matchup between the Patriots and the Dolphins? Yeah, I think this is the hardest game on the board to handicap, to be honest with you. It's just so much mystery between both teams. You know, we talked about the Patriots and losing McDaniels. You know, they they get rid of the fullback in the offseason. They're going to look to be more vertical down the field. And then they lose Thornton, the rookie wide receiver, who was one of their best playmakers in training camp, right? So, and then they have, you know, who's calling the plays, Joe Judge, Matt Patricia. Just so much unknown with the Patriots. Um, so, you know, we're not really sure what to expect with this team. And then we have the new piece is with Miami, um, you know, then the big question is, can Tua, you know, deliver in an offense that added Tyree Kill? You know, now they have Jalen Waddle, ton of weapons. Mm -hmm. They beefed up the offensive line, um, which I really like in the offseason. But early in the season, is that stuff going to be able to come together against the New England Patriots team? Belichick might not have as many horses on defense, but schematically, he's still best in the NFL. So uh, this game, to me, is is close to a coin flip. So the fact that we're getting over the key number of three with the Patriots makes sense to me. I think they're about 150 on the money line. Um, you know, that might be – there might be some value there as well. But lots of questions with both, te both teams, so it's a pass for me. But if I were to pick a side, I would take the points with the underdog. I think it's a great point now that you have the three in a hook in this game because last year these teams opened up the season against one another. It was New England as a three and a half point favorite in Miami one outright. In fact, the Finns swept the season series against New England a season ago, but that was Brian Flores as the head coach and Bill Belichick dominates rookie head coaches and that's what Mike McDaniel is now for Miami. Mark, we talked about some of the news around the quarterback position in the National Football League earlier in the show. We got confirmation yesterday. It is a Joe Flacco revenge game on Sunday inside MetLife Stadium for the Jets and the Ravens. And the line working against New York after Flacco was named the starter. Now the Jets getting seven and a half at home. Mark, how does your handicap for this game change now that Joe Flacco has officially been named the starting quarterback? Yeah, I think it gives them a little more stability on offense, but I'm not really sure it's going to make a difference. You know, you look at the Ravens team and and all they've they're getting back after a year that was really um, ravaged by injuries. You know, especially in the second yeah. secondary, they lost Humphrey at the end of the year. They lost Marcus Peters before the season, and then they go out. They get those two backs. So they have their solid corners. They draft Kyle Hamilton. They get Marcus Williams from the Saints. So really paid attention to kind of, you know, strengthening that secondary in the offseason. Um, don't think the Jets are going to be able to run the ball too much in this game. Uh, again, this is the dilemma that betters are in, you know, with the, the entire week one card, it feels like, is, do, you know, the road team seems to be the, the significant favorite here, but really yeah. don't want to make a habit of laying seven points on the road with any team. So I think the Ravens make a ton of sense as a teaser leg. Um, you know, just like some other teams, you know, you can pair them up with on the card. And that's really how I would approach, uh, you know, betting this game. Mark, it's such a great point because now Baltimore is tied for the largest spread in their favor this weekend. Seven and a half on the road in New York against the Jets, really New Jersey. Indianapolis tied for that biggest spread, a seven and a half point favorite on the road in Houston as well. Some teaser spots for sure. But it's the final day, or really it's the starting day of the regular season, but the final hours of those futures markets in the preseason before individual game outcomes affect those numbers. So, Mark, let's go big picture here. Let's look at the NFL MVP odds. As we mentioned, Josh Allen is that betting favorite at plus 700, but there's Tom Brady, 
There's Patrick Mahomes, Justin Herbert, the two-time reigning NFL MVP in Aaron Rodgers. Mark, where do you believe the value might lie in the NFL MVP market? Yeah, I really like Herbert with, with the Chargers, to be honest with you. I'm huge on Herbert this year um, and what the Chargers can do, you know, now that they've kind of supported him with some defense, right? So they, they go out and they get Khalil Mack. They're going to have a tremendous pass rush. That was really what held them back last year. But, uh, you know, last season, Herbert, you can see him continuing to ascend into, you know, that company of elite quarterbacks in the NFL mm-hmm. through for over 5,000 yards. And, um, you know, he, he actually, since he's come into the league, leads the NFL in air yards over 55 um, yards on touchdown passes. So I really think Herbert is in position. I think the Chargers are going to win a ton of games, and he's going to get a lot of recognition for it. I think he can win the award here. It's a great point as well, correlating it to L.A. Their odds to win the AFC West getting better, plus 220. Their win total is at 10. If the Chargers finally have success, it will be because of Justin Herbert, and those two go hand in hand. Mark Drumheller from the Yahoo Sportsbook, helping us get ready for this NFL season. Mark, fantastic stuff today. Look forward to having you back on the show, and we'll talk some college football next time as well. Definitely. Thanks, Ben. Thanks for having me. Enjoy the start of this NFL regular season because it starts tonight in Los Angeles. What's the best bet? That's what we asked you up next in Fade the Public. it's going to work out for him but I just don't see him being on the field nearly as much as he was last season maybe the touchdown numbers will will have him in that tight end one category or his career he would have gotten out I mean I guess he had 108 rushing yards but six rushing touchdowns in his career so it doesn't give you any upside there Carr to be honest for me just is not a guy I ever end up targeting fantasy sports today only on Sports Grid. Your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best lips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Cam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on Sports Grid. The early line. DJU's final statistics 19 for 32, 209 yards and a touchdown, 13 carries for 28 yards and a touchdown on the ground. Listen, Cade Klubnik was out there for just one series, but if you were watching this game, I thought he looked far more explosive at the quarterback position. He just looked really better than DJU. Only on SportsGrid. Pharrell, coast to coast. You lose to Syracuse, your season's already over. I mean, they were favored in that game by five, and they got whacked by Syracuse, and, and the Orange looked good, and Louisville didn't look good. Now, I don't know what to think. Uh, of Louisville after that performance. I don't know about writing them off completely. I think they had a bad road game, but we'll see how they look this week if they turn it around. The Sports Grid Network. The morning after. So hot out here. It's like the hot seat in Lincoln, Nebraska for Scott Frost. It's a good college football joke. It's a 17 and a half point spread. Did you know that? Yeah. In favor of Alabama. Yeah. For sweating out my week one bets. Back to me. One more time. Back to me. That's a touchdown. Hook them horns, baby. Hook them horns? What if I did the other way? Oh, no. College football is still very exciting. Yes. Yes. The Sports Grid Network.
we round out our number one of the morning after on this glorious Thursday live right here on Sports Grid. It is glorious because the NFL is back tonight. The regular season opener in Los Angeles between the Rams and the Bills. Thank you for joining us in this opening hour on Sirius XM Channel 159. That's the home for Sports Grid Radio on Sirius XM and all across the Spiz Grizz Network. That's Sports Grid. I am Ben Stevens. We have seen a small bit of line movement on this Thursday morning in the numbers for that season opener tonight in L.A. between the Rams and the Bills. Buffalo still a a two-and-a-half point favorite. That line has worked in favor of the Bills all offseason long, but the total is the one that has moved this morning from 52-and-a-half for that over-under down to 51-and-a-hook. So of those options, spread, side, total, what is the best bet Tonight, that's what we asked you in Fade the Public. So as the public sees it, it's honestly a pretty close margin at this moment. At SportsGrid TV on Twitter, what's the best bet for the NFL season opener between the Bills and the Rams? Early on in this poll, I will say, Buffalo had a lot more of that public favor. Now the Rams, as the home dog, Getting that love from the public. Nearly 35% of our active and ongoing poll at Sports Grid TV think the Rams getting two and a half points at home is the best bet tonight. But all of those options, pretty, pretty close, except the under trails. Nobody wants to bet an under of a total at 51 and a half for the first game of this season. But let us not forget something here. Buffalo had the best scoring defense and the best total defense in the league a season ago. The last time we saw Buffalo on the field, they couldn't slow down the Chiefs worth anything. But Buffalo is still a very good defense. Just something to keep in mind as we approach that lofty 51 and a half for and over under. Plenty more to come from this game and the rest of the NFL Week 1 slate in hour number two of the morning after. But we go around the sports world as well. Major League Baseball and the U.S. Open in tennis. Stay with us here on TMA. TMA. 